So in this video, we're going to look at why companies, as opposed to governments, issue bonds, but one or two of the factors that influence the price of a bond in terms of key risks for investors, and also uh, the role of the ratings agencies in trying to assess risk and point investors to higher and lower risk bonds. Okay, so take a company. Why would it issue a bond in the first place? Well, if you're a company such as, say, Tesco, you have various choices about how you finance your operations. For example, if you make enough profits of your own, you can simply reinvest them without asking anybody and grow the business by buying stores. So companies enjoy what's called organic growth. And the lucky ones grow that way all the time. They don't have to go to external third parties and try and persuade them to give them money. But of course, that's not an option for all firms, especially ones that want to grow quickly. So option number two, you could try the bank. That's what I'd do. I'd probably go to my bank manager and say, how about an overdraft or a personal loan? And a company can do that as well. But there may be a cheaper way for a large company such as Tesco to raise capital. And that's where bond issues come in. In essence, what Tesco is saying is, well, actually, we're looking at a serious sum of money, maybe 100 million. Perhaps we can raise that cheaper over here than over there, because what we're going to do is go to investors, slice up the 100 million into tradable chunks. Each one's called a bond. It carries a coupon. It carries a redemption date. And what we'll do is sell them off in chunks typically to institutional investors such as pension funds and life assurance companies. And the reason for doing it sounds like a lot of hassle compared to a bank loan, but the reason for doing it is you can often raise the money cheaper. Not an option available to Tim Bennett, there's not a Tim Bennett bond out there, but it is an option available to big firms such as BP, Tesco and the like. There's a fourth one, which we're not covering in this video, and that's called a share issue. An alternative to issuing bonds is to bring in new owners and in return they'll expect dividends for example and hopefully some share price growth. This is actually the most expensive route. Shareholders take more risk than bondholders because basically dividends are not guaranteed. Interest normally has to be paid on bonds by law and also if a company goes bust shareholders are at the bottom of the heap. And shareholders also can't do something the bank could do which is ask Tesco for security. A bit like my mortgage is secured on my house, so Tesco could offer a bank some form of security. It could also offer bondholders a similar type of security, but that's not something shareholders get. So, four sources of finance, and we're gonna focus on this one, bonds. Now, question is, if I'm buying bonds, I'm buying Tesco bonds, what are the risks? What's gonna affect the price? How do I know whether they're gonna go up or down and by how much? Well, worth taking a look at the two key factors. There are many that influence the price of say a Tesco bond. So let's put one up on the board and have a quick think about what those factors might be. For example, imagine I'm looking at a Tesco. 6%, there's the coupon. 2029 bond priced at around 110 at the moment. That's the market price per 100 pound nominal value. Um, in another video, we look at what this coupon means and what this redemption date's all about and also the difference between the market price and nominal value. So let's take that as red for a moment and just think about, well, if I buy this bond for 110, it's offering a 6% coupon. What do I need to worry about as an investor? What, what is going to make this bond fluctuate in value? What's going to make it more volatile, less volatile? And there are two factors. There are actually many, including the kind of mood the bond traders are in when they wake up on Monday morning. Believe it or not, it is a market after all. But there are two key ones. One, interest rates.
this is a fixed coupon bond. No matter what happens tomorrow morning, in other words, no matter what in rate of interest my building society offers or I can get from the Bank of England, Tesco is offering 6% flat until 2029. That's £6 per £100 nominal. That ain't changing, or it's highly unlikely. So as an investor, do I buy this for 110? Could I put my money to work elsewhere? Um, and what I need to think about is what could I earn elsewhere? And here's the point. If a building society suddenly says, you know what, Tim? If you've got 110 pounds spare right now, we'll give you 10%. Why would I buy that? It's riskier for a start, and it's not offering 10%. I wouldn't. So that is too much money. That's not going to change, so that's got to. Okay. So as interest rates rise elsewhere, and they're driven by the Bank of England central bank rate in the UK, fixed income bond prices tend to fall as people think, do you know what, that's not such a good deal, and dump them. Equally, if other interest rates start falling, driven by the Bank of England base rate, which pulls down current account and deposit account rates with it, doesn't pull down this, that's fixed but it will affect the price. People will suddenly think, do you know what, 6%? It's quite attractive. I'll have some of that, and I'll start piling in and driving the price up. That's assuming you think Tesco's a good bet. And we'll look at the organisations that test that in a moment. OK, another factor. The second key one. Time to maturity or redemption. This is a 2029 bond. It's quite a long way away in 2010 from being bought back by Tesco. So to be honest, the fact we know that bonds are worth their nominal value on redemption, £100, isn't that important at the moment. That's years away. So of these two factors, for a long dated bond like this, most investors will watch interest rates like a hawk. However, that changes. For example, if that was tomorrow. In other words, fast forward, we're in 2029 with a night before Tesco's going to buy this bond back. And the coupon's still 6%, because it always will be. And the bond is trading £110. Unless you're mad, you would not touch it with a barge pole. And you wouldn't touch it with a barge pole, even if that somehow doubled. And the reason is, you buy it for £110 and it's redeemable tomorrow, you're getting £100 back. So you've thrown away 10 quid, And that's mad. So chances are, if that was true, the price of the bond logically would be very close to £100. Because that's what everyone knows it's worth tomorrow morning. Okay, so all we're saying here is that interest rates have a heavy bearing on the price of a bond, such as this one. But as you get closer to the maturity date, people do start to worry and price in the fact that you know the redemption value. That's worth bearing in mind. OK, one other aspect of bonds. Tesco. I mean, there's one other problem here. It's all very well looking at all of this and thinking, will this bond go up or down if interest rates change and by how much? And there are one or two ways of measuring that in practice. But there's another risk. Forget whether it goes up or down. What if Tesco doesn't exist in 2029, or indeed next year? What about default risk? Because if Tesco, unlikely you might say, goes bust, you'll get nothing back because potentially there'll be no one to pay you back. So as a bondholder, it's crucial to think about default risk. And some people say, well, that's quite difficult. I mean, I can maybe have a go at Tesco because I've heard of the brand name, but I mean, I wouldn't know how to go about starting default risk calculations on something else. Fortunately, you don't need to. And the reason for that, in theory, is there is a bunch of people out there paid to do the job for you. Ratings agencies. The organisations that you'll see in the press uh, and all over the place at the moment are Standard & Poor's, these are the sort of names. Moody's, a rival organisation, and there's another one out there, Fitch. These are all ratings agencies. And what they do is they put a rating 
on bond issuers and bonds. So they'll look at a company such as Tesco and ask themselves the question, just how financially sound is Tesco? They do ratio analysis amongst other things. And they'll also look at the type of bond that's been issued by Tesco because some bonds are riskier than others. And they'll come up with a rating. And if you're a really risk averse investor, you ideally want over here, for example, the so-called AAA rating. That means the issuer is as safe as the government, pretty much, or at least most governments. Okay, once you get to a rating below AAA, so essentially these guys crunch the numbers, put a rating on each bond and the issuer, and decide whether it's AAA or below, once you start to move down the alphabet, and it goes as far as D normally, D for default, that's serious trouble, all right? Um, as you slip down the ratings, anything on this score, much below about triple B, is known as sub-investment grade. It's in some language, almost non or subprime. So as an investor, you can get a sort of warm feeling, not a guarantee, I have to say, Lehman Brothers was AAA before it went bust, effectively. But you can get a kind of warm feeling by looking at the rating. This is public information. And the higher it is, the closer to AAA, the less risky, all other things being equal, the issuer and the bond are thought to be.